Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Monday, April 5th, 2021. We're brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist I've ever gone to, the only dentist I've gone to the last 27 years. Do you know why? Because he's the best. When you find the best, you stay with the best. So call 317-849-2933 and ask, can I get an appointment with the best dentist that there is? They're going to say, yeah, we got him right here. It's Dr. Mike O'Neill. Again, 317-849-2933. Hit like, hit subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Now let's talk about Indiana sports. The Indiana Hoosiers, they're trying to figure out Mike Woodson is a new coach, who he's got and who he doesn't have. It's been just over a week since it was announced that he was going to be hired as the new Indiana coach. Some guys still in the portal. Okay, we found out on Friday Trace Jackson Davis is going to suit up for Indiana. He doesn't know whether Armand Franklin's going to do that. Neither do we. Armand Franklin is not announced yet. Neither has Jordan Geronimo. Neither has Christian Lander. And neither is Race Thompson. If we are checking the tea leaves, what do we think about Race Thompson? Race Thompson is a four, an undersized four, who really can't shoot very well. That's a problem. Doesn't shoot foul shots well. Not being able to shoot is going to be a problem when you're trying to build an offensively efficient machine. You look at the game tonight between Baylor and Gonzaga, number one and number two, Gonzaga, and then Baylor, number one and two in offensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. That's where you got to get. You got to be offensively efficient, so you got to be able to shoot, and you got to be able to shoot from the foul line. Three point shots. Armand Franklin is the one guy who hit better than 38% this past year who also took more than 10 shots. Jordan Geronimo hit 4 of 10, but that's not a reasonable sample size. Al Durham, he hit 38%, 38 of 100. He's not coming back to Indiana. He's going to go to Providence College. So there you go. you got to keep guys who can shoot and guys who can't shoot. You kind of say, well, you know what? If you want to go, you can go. Let's talk about other guys, all right? I think the odds are pretty darn good that Armand Franklin's going to stay. That's what I've been hearing. Jordan Geronimo, I don't hear necessarily that he's going to stay. Christian Lander, I have no idea how he's making his decision. So I speculation is futile, right? I think he should stay. I think that's easy. If I were counseling him, I would say you stay at Indiana because Mike Woodson is going to figure out how to make you the best possible version of Christian Lander for NBA scouts. You want to make millions of dollars, you stay at Indiana, you put in the work, you figure it out. That's what Trace Jackson Davis is going to do, and he's a pretty damn smart guy. I think Christian Lander should do the same. If you can bring back Lander and you can bring back Armand Franklin, I think you can have a hell of a good team, even with if all the guys come back, minus L. Durham, who's gone. But if all the guys who are currently in the portal come back, you've got two scholarships to give. So here are the names of some guys and traits of some guys that Indiana may look at and are looking at in the transfer portal. All right, out of Florida, you got Noah Locke. Noah Locke can shoot threes. Indiana needs guys who can shoot threes. He's six feet, three inches tall, and he is a 40% foul shooter throughout his three years as a guard at Florida. You've got Keon Brooks at Kentucky. He may choose to go back to Kentucky, may choose to go someplace else. Keon Brooks, we know from his time at La Lumiere and in Fort Wayne before that. Uh, Keon, 6'7", 10.3 points per game last year, Uh, 16 games, three starts, only 21.4% from beyond the arc. That's something to keep an eye on. Cole Swider from Villanova, 6'9", 40.2% three-point shooter. And then Xavier Johnson, who's really close to Kenya Hunter, the assistant coach who's going to stay with Mike Woodson that we know of at this point. He's a guy who's 6'3". He averaged 14.2 points per game last year, only a 32.1% shooter from beyond the arc. But a 79% foul shooter. you got to be able to hit foul shots. you got to be able to knock down corner threes. If you can do those two things, you're going to space the floor, trace Jackson Davis if Mike Woodson can work with him to become two-handed. He becomes a very dangerous individual inside, and that is going to fuel Indiana's offense. I caught just a bit of Dan Dockich's show today, and he was talking about Trace Jackson Davis. 
talking about how the coaching staff, the previous coaching staff, kind of, uh, you know, pulled the reins on the offense. And, and Dan said, there is not a coach in the country that wants to play more slowly than the players do. The players oftentimes slow the offense down. I thought that that was the case with Indiana. I didn't think it was Archie. I thought Archie wanted him to go. The players, they slow it down in fear of turning the ball over, taking bad shots. And I, I thought that Indiana was kind of paralyzed by that. I didn't think necessarily it was coaches. Uh, will be interesting to see exactly what Indiana do. The guys who are going to be back, you've got Trace Jackson Davis, Jerome Hunter, Rob Finnessy. Hunter and Finnessy hit less than 65% from the line this year. Brunk coming back. Parker Stewart is going to play. Trey Galloway will be back. Anthony Leal will be back. And Logan Duncan is coming in as an incoming freshman, a big from Cincinnati who can shoot it a little bit and looks kind of like, to me, looks like Luke Fisher did back in the day before Luke transferred up to Marquette. Um, Armand Franklin, Geronimo Thompson, Lander are guys who are deciding whether they want to stay. Geronimo and Thompson hit fewer than 65% from the line. And then you've got transfers, and uh, you, you got a, who knows exactly what the 13 are going to look like. But I'll tell you what's interesting. We talked about it a minute this morning, is that Indiana being led by a 63-year-old coach, Mike Woodson is not looking to win when he's 67. He's not looking to put together a four-year plan so that Indiana can go about winning in 2025. Mike Woodson wants to win right to hell now. And that's what Mike Woodson is going to try to put together as a head coach at Indiana, a team that can win now. That sense of urgency is going to be a big deal for the Hoosiers. Let's talk about the Colts, shall we? We got the, we got the championship game tonight, but I mean, what the hell? We're going to talk about that. How nauseating is it to see the two teams who are the two best in college basketball make it to the championship game and blah, blah, blah. Drives me nuts. I'm going to watch. You know I'm going to watch. You're going to watch. You know, Gonzaga's a four-and-a-half-point favorite. I think Gonzaga had their bad game against UCLA. I think they come out tonight and they put away Baylor. I, I think that Baylor, 41% three-point shooting team. Team, 41%. All right? As a team. Not their best three-point shooter hitting 41%. As a team, they're hitting 41%. I think it's going to be tough with the spotlight as hot as it is tonight at Lucas Oil Stadium for Baylor to stroke it at that level from beyond the arc. All right. So I, if I were a bet man, I got Gonzaga, and I am happily giving the four and a half. Because even if it's close, Baylor's going to foul late, and Gonzaga, really good foul shooting team. All right, let's talk about the Colts in the draft. It's 24 days away. So I, I think... And correct me if you think I'm wrong. But if you think I'm wrong, you're high. The draft, you're going to see the Colts go get a left tackle, starting level left tackle. I don't believe that they got that guy in free agency. And I think they're going to go out and get a starting level edge rusher. They may trade back to do it. But here are the best at their position, kind of in tiers. First round, second round, third round with left tackles. Um, Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State. You've got Christian Derisaw from Virginia Tech, who's the guy I really like. He's the guy. If he's available at 21, you take him at 21. I think that the Colts are going to move back, unless a guy like Derisaw is available. I don't think he's going to be available. I think he's going to go before 21, but I saw a mock draft today where he was going 29. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So Jenkins, then Derisaw, and Sam Cosme, Samuel Cosme out of Texas. I think he's terrific. Those are the three guys you would consider taking in the first round at left tackle who are likely to be available at 21. I don't believe the Colts are going to trade up to go get a guy. Like Sewell is not a guy they're going to be able to go get, and, and that's just the way that is. Um, then in the second round, you got guys like Dylan Raddins from North Dakota State. You've got Liam Eichenberg from Notre Dame, and you got Alex Leatherwood from Alabama. So if you trade back and you believe you can get any one of those three guys, if those three guys float to your boat at 21, you can trade back, let's say, with the Packers in the late 20s and pick up their second round pick at the back end of the second round. You can go do something like that 
and feel pretty confident you're going to get one of your guys at 29 or 28 or 29, wherever the Packers pick, right? I think that that's more likely than anything. In the second round, like I said, Dylan Raddins, uh, Liam Eichenberg, and then Alex Leatherwood, those three guys, if you want to invest an early second round pick, if you want to trade back into the second round, that makes a certain amount of sense. In the third round, I really like Walker Little out of Stanford. Walker Little hadn't played football since 2019, but he projects as a starting level left tackle who's going to be available in all likelihood late in the second round, early in the third round, maybe even a little bit deeper than that. I think he's going to wind up starting. So if you can trade back and you can get value, right, another pick, and you wind up with Walker Little, I don't think that's a terrible thing. So if you see... The Colts stick at 21, get a starting level cornerback at 21, or a wide receiver. Don't don't freak. Don't you know have a, a some kind of apoplexy. It's going to be okay. Trust Chris Ballard. He's going to get his starting left tackle. It just depends on where in the draft he chooses to invest that pick. At edge, edge is a little bit trickier, right? Because edge those traits are abundantly clear on tape. Who you want, who you can get. All right, Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. You got some people in mock drafts having him going fourth to the Falcons. You got some people who have him dropping all the way to the Colts at 21. Quiddy Pay is an athletic guy. He's a little bit choppy. He's not got the long strides, but he is. he projects as a dynamic player on the edge uh, he's not my guy, though. Uh, Jason Owe is my guy out of Penn State. I think he's going to be really good. He acts like a Colt. He's got the physical characteristics of a dynamic edge rusher. I think that uh, we saw him play against Indiana, and he looked great. He didn't have a single sack this past season, but still, without a sack, Big Ten coaches, they voted him first team all Big Ten. That tells you something about Jason Owe. You've got uh, Carlos Basham. I- I'm not a huge Carlos Basham guy. He's from Lake, uh, Wake Forest. Jalen Phillips from Miami had to retire from football because of injuries, but he's got the full physical package. Greg Russo from Miami, not a tremendous fan of Russo, but he's an athletic freak. He's a former wide receiver who put on weight, and as a result now, he's an edge rush guy. Uh, going to take time for him to develop into a starting level edge rush guy. Um, but in 2019, he had 15 and a half sacks, right? He opted out this past year, but 15 and a half sacks, no matter where it came from on the line, he was doing a lot of stunt and he came through the O gap a whole bunch. And, and so scouts, they say, Hey, tap the brakes a little bit. That's not going to happen in the NFL. Tremendous athlete. Maybe you can coach him up. If you get him in the second round, he might be a guy to target. In the second round, Joe Tryon from Washington. You've got Ronnie Perkins from Oklahoma. You've got Joseph Asai from Texas, who's really, really good. I like Asai. Maybe you go Texas with Cosme and Osai. I don't know. But you have got to go. How about Aziz Ojolari from Georgia? His name popped into my head. All those guys have a variety of assets and some debits to their, uh, in their resume. It's up to Chris Ballard to figure out which to trust. He's got to get an edge rush guy. He's got to get a left tackle. I think he, those are the guys he's going to look at, and he's going to assess where he thinks they're going to be selected, where they project to be selected, and he's going to make his moves in the draft based upon who he covets and where he thinks they will fall much like he did last year and in previous years in the draft, where he's going to make deals, he's going to wind up with the people that he wants, and we're going to see whether he was right or not, and he's going to try to build more draft inventory for 2022 and 2023. It's going to be a fascinating 24 days. I can't wait to see what happens in the first round. We'll talk about it tomorrow morning. Breakfast with Kent, bright and early. Remember to subscribe, for goodness sake. Talk to you at 8 o'clock, Facebook Live, and immediately thereafter on YouTube and in all other services brought to you by the great people of today's dentistry.